Hey, it's Remy and it is day two at Reefstock Denver. VIP doors just opened. We had so much fun on day one. We met so many great vendors, so many great products for the hobby. Let's see what we can find today. Before we start, I wanted to show you a little bit of the Reef Builder Studio. We got a chance to see all the aquariums and gather with good friends and colleagues. This was my first time seeing Jake's work in person, and it was so moving. My favorite tank was the mangrove tank. We've all seen this on video, but seeing it in person just took my breath away. This weekend was all about remembering Jake and keeping his legacy alive. Let's head back over to day two of Reefstock. All right, we're at the Two Little Fishies booth with our good friend Julian Sprung. Before we start, a gentleman walked up before and he was like, you know, nobody's got books, but you've got books. I got There's books. Actually, a really, really new book here that, yeah. uh, that has just gone out. Can yeah, you take us through all that? Right, this is, uh, as they say, hot off the press. Yeah. I mean, you can almost feel the steam, right? You opened it in front of yeah, us. Yeah, that was it. <laughs> this is a new book by Tony Vargas. It's the second volume in his, in his series, which uh, covers all the fine level of details uh, from the experience of some of the most uh, advanced hobbyists around the world in setting up their aquariums. So it tells the stories, in, you know, background, how they plan their aquariums, how they set them up, what equipment they used, um, and in addition to that, it, it has a couple of chapters on corals and fishes, um, beautifully illustrated. Yeah, uh, there's some of the corals. If you're planning a new exhibit and you want to be inspired by, by what other advanced hobbyists have achieved, um, the book is really a, a great reference uh, just to understand what, yeah. what is possible and, and to put it in words that make it easy to comprehend. Yeah, we have another new book uh, by Martin Moe, who is a very famous uh, hobbyist, um, also really the first person to commercially breed clownfish, who yeah. really set the ball rolling for uh, the growth of mariculture and aquaculture in, in the marine aquarium hobby. And um, he made it a project of his to work on the aquaculture of the diadema or long spine sea urchin. Um, not for the ornamental value in the aquarium hobby, but actually for reef restoration, because the long spine sea urchin um, had a plague back in the 1980s, and the absence of that sea urchin on reefs in the Florida and the Caribbean really precipitated a, a major decline in, in coral cover and coral health. And this book uh, recounts his whole adventure in that process, and it serves as a guide for anyone interested in, in taking that step. Last year, we introduced the oh, yes. algae racer. Yes. And this is the partnered algae racer called Little Scrape. But this year, we're showing an extender and it's tight and it's rigid and it does you know doesn't bend so we can really this is the shorter one um, algae racer is is that much longer so it will work for deep tanks um, this is coming out in about a month okay. uh, we actually have the product but we're working on the packaging and yeah. it just looks cool it does let's be honest there's a lot yeah. of algae scrapers out there and this one it just it's modern it's sleek it's stainless steel might display and, that. Yeah. Put it on a wall. Like yeah. a ninja sword. Display and use it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. we should we should make um like a little mounting rack. displays. Yeah. So yeah. I'll Instead take of just throwing it idea. around. There you go. <laughs> Good idea. Good idea. There was one other product from Two Little Fishies oh, yeah. I didn't mention. Um, this will be available also in about a month. We have a whole line of uh, dry powdered foods for corals and other filter feeding invertebrates. And this is a new one. Um, that we're calling Polyp Power. 
playing on the name of Acro Power and Ghania Power. Um, it is um, a very, very fine particle size and has the nice attribute of being neutrally buoyant. Okay. Um, and so it stays drifting in the water column a long time. Uh, I That's do want to ask before we, before we part, what, yes. is, what does reef stock mean to you? Um, yeah, that's a, a poignant question. I mean, from the beginning, reef stock was certainly a Jake Adams uh, creation. Yeah. And so um, with him no longer living and not here, um, it's really this year a, a transition um, to the future of reef, reef stock, seeing his dream um, continue to grow and and be a benefit to the whole aquarium industry. Sure. Uh, so what it means to me is, uh, you know, uh, a wonderful venue to get together with friends, uh, whether in Colorado or I've been to the one as well in Australia. Um, remember Jake and what his vision was uh, for it. Yeah. Um, yeah. Julian, thank you so much for the talk today. Pleasure. Have a great reef stock. All right, we're here at Rocky Mountain Fish Filter Company with Doug. Doug. Smith, yep. Your filter's been kind of the talk of the town here. Can you take us through what you've designed? Uh, what we've created is a direct replacement for the standard uh, four-inch filter sock, you know, the old traditional four-inch sock, the 10-inch length. Yeah. Uh, we just wanted an easy uh, replacement that we could just pull the sock out and uh, put a new uh, filter in without any modification to the sump or anything like that. And we also felt like there was a better way that we could filter rather than just some uh, material. So what we've turned to is disc technology. So a disc technology, what it is, is just a series of discs with very small grooves on it. And as they're stacked up, uh, there's a small channel that allows the water to travel through those, to those two discs. Okay. So we just take a whole stack of those discs, and now we have a multiple channels for that water to flow through. So how many discs are there? On this particular model, there's 187. Wow. And I know, so that gives us 186 channels. And then we also have uh, the width of the disc as well. So this is all surface area that is, is filtration area. So it's not just a, a single wall like a fabric. So we have quite a few square inches of, of filter area. So what, is, what are the discs made of again? Yeah, these are polypropylene. Okay. So they're very flexible, they won't break or anything like that. So uh, they're inert plastic as well, so they're tank, uh, fish tank safe. Okay, yeah. well let's see these things in action. Yeah, absolutely. Kind of describe you know, obviously this is a typical, what we would see with the filter sock area. Yeah, so if your filter sock is in your sump like this, you would basically take your sock out and we have a direct replacement that just goes in and you, it, you're, you're filtering now. So there's not any really any modification that you need to do. Okay. So with this, we do offer a, a media cup. Yeah, that's cool. Right, so it's, it's a, a separate part. You can put whatever media we want. We just have some bio balls in here for demonstration. But you could put activated charcoal, carbon in there, uh, floss or anything like that. And then it's just a bayonet mount and it just mounts back on there. Okay. Now the cool part about it is that when it does get dirty and it's time to clean, you simply take this cap off. It's captive, so it keeps all the discs. They oh, separate. Oh, that's nice. And then you just rinse it off. So then you'll be able to spray it off with a yeah. hose or in your sink or wherever. I was envisioning like having to place each one <laughs> yeah. of them back no, on. We, That's a great design. We don't want anybody to have to do that. So then you just tighten it back up. You give it a little snug. There's an O-ring at the bottom of this. And what that does is there's a groove in our sleeve and it does two things. It creates a seal around the bottom so that it forces the water through those channels. And it additionally, it keeps it captive so that you can easily put it in and out of your tank. Gotcha. Right. How often would you recommend uh, maintenance on this? Yeah, so the, the part that we made, so we made the, the cup clear so you could actually see the debris being collected. So you can have a visual about how much it's doing, uh, how much it's collecting. And also, the water level will rise as the filter clogs. So we have discharge ports on the top uh, for drains. Okay. So that if it clogs up, it'll just drain down the center. You won't get any filtration that way, but you're not flooding your tanks. So gotcha. it depends on how uh, big your tank is and what your flow rate is and how many fish you have so forth so I generally clean mine when I do water changes about every 10 days okay
So where can where can people find your your filter? Yeah, we are at RockyMountainFishFilter.com or thefishfilter.com. So we have two different uh, IP or addresses for that. Um, you just, just you know, Google search Rocky Mountain Fish Filter and we'll come up. Very cool. Yeah. Well, I got to say, your filter's been the talk of the town. Thank you. Appreciate at Reefstock, that. So I'm glad we got to catch up with you. Thank awesome. you so much hey, for your time. Appreciate your time. Thank you. Appreciate it. All right, we're here with Roger from Tunzi. Uh, we're going to talk about some, some new stuff that you guys have to offer. Yeah. Uh, can you kind of take me through what sure. display you've got here? Sure. So at the last Reef Builders, we showed off a 3D printed prototype of the Aquawin. These are ready now. Uh, they'll be in the U.S. in about three more weeks. Uh, it's a purpose-built fan for cooling aquariums, IP57 rated. You can control the speed if you have a, a control system for it. Otherwise, you can just plug it into any temperature controller or timer. Uh, it's a 12-volt fan. Uh, with the IP57 rating, you can take splash and spray and it'll still run. Um, should be a very long-lasting cooling fan that's safe for, for aquariums. Yeah, and it looks nice, too. Yeah. I feel like, you know, you get people that put their desk fans up on the tank, and this actually looks nice. Yeah, yeah. the, the flow of the air is very directed. You can aim it. There's an adjustment screw here to tilt the fan. So this is uh, a new pump that's available as an accessory for the Osmolator. It's the uh, HiJet. It's capable of about 12 feet of head pressure, so if you need to pump from, say, a basement up to your sump, it's capable of doing that. Um, it co it'll come as a set with the tubing because it now uses a six millimeter airline tubing and okay. just has a push fit connector. And they are considerably more quiet than the original pump. With all the background noise in here, you can't really- I don't hear a thing. Hear the pump <laughs> noise, but. Later this year, we'll release our new cloud-based uh, control system. So this is the first component, the Smart Controller 7000. It connects to tunzihub.de. Going forward, most of our products will become um, integrated as a native feature. So the next generation of pumps, they'll just connect directly to Tunzi Hub without a control, without an intermediate module, intermediate module. But this module would allow you to connect existing products and other brands of products. Uh, the cable allows up to five connections per port. So in this case, we have this connector for our fan. Yeah. This connector would power a dosing pump. This connector can power a Kessel light or a standard zero to 10 volt control. One of our lights, one of our pumps. And so you can connect a big variety of devices. It has a temperature probe, pH probe. Did you say you had some other products over at the Yeah, Kessel booth? so the, uh, the Care Booster Premiums are out. Yeah, they couple on magnetically. And this is rosewood, this is olive, and this is uh, Makassar. Now, what makes these particularly neat is that they're, they're actually made out of ash, and they're dyed all the way through in a process. So it's a, um, it's an, earth-friendly wood because this is all grown on, on tree farms. So is this for the people that like to leave them in the tank? More or less. Uh, you know, <laughs> if you have a very high-end finished tank and you want something to kind of match your stand, these give you a, a very decorative look. But if you just want to add, you know, a little splurge of fashion to it, yeah, it's possible. So Very cool. Well, Roger, thank you for taking us through everything. Yeah, uh, no problem. Have a good reef stock. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you. All right, we're here at the Algae Barn slash Cade booth with Sean. How are you doing? Doing well, Remy. How about yourself? Doing fantastic. How's Reefstock been so far? It's overall been great. It's great turnout. And it's great to kind of get the old gang, I guess you yeah. can say, together. And we're all kind of, uh, you know, we're here. It's sad because Jake's not here. Yeah. Uh, and this was his baby. Yep. Uh, but we're trying to live through it and uh, do better, I guess. As, you know? as, uh, as Julian said, we just had a chance to talk to him, just kind of making sure that Jake's vision is, you know. Carried forward, through. yeah, yeah. So, uh, but I think he'd be happy with this year. And I think, I think he'd think be stoked. Most of all, I think he'd be happy that we're all getting together, like you said. Exactly. Uh, to continue on and continue in this hobby. You've got some awesome tanks. I saw you guys uh, lifting one out of here yesterday. Yeah, yeah, we sold a couple yesterday, so overall it was great to kind yeah. of uh, get people to see the tanks in person, because sometimes people are just like, I've seen it online, they look really nice, but 
you know, they want to touch and see it, and sure. this is going to be like a big part of their home. Yeah. Uh, so this is our new Cade uh, that we just released. Uh, it's the Ultimate uh, 1500. So it's going to be five feet long, uh, just about two feet front to back, yeah. and then 30 inches tall. So this is this is where Cade really shines, I think, is is the cabinetry that you get with it. I would agree with that. The uh, the side cabinet over here, where you can get in. So on the right hand side, we have this controller cabinet area, where you also have our PDU, our power distribution, yeah, uh, units. And so you got 16 rocker switches here. You can mount everything in there. The doors are glass, and the paint's all on the inside. Okay. So when you're wiping down your aquarium, you're not going to be fading it, just to Very keep it cool. clean. That's awesome. And I bet you that shines up real nice, too. It does. It really does. So this is the new tank. You guys obviously have several other models here. Correct. So we have our frag tank here. So we have these frags and everything from two feet all the way up to five feet. Wow, that's a cool dimension. It's, it's a really cool dimension. It's uh, still got pretty much all the features that the reef does. Okay. It's just shorter. So this is about 16 inches. So as far as like Algae Barn products, you got yeah. anything new there? Yeah, so we have a couple new ones. So one of the new ones we released recently is our Spherical GFO. So you can see it's very low in dust and they're just really nice pellets. Uh, they tumble really nicely and they don't really fragment. Uh, we're going to be releasing some media baskets soon. Uh, this way they just come kind of shipped like this. Nice. And then I guess the last thing to really show, so these are our porous uh, refuge rounds. Uh, and we have three different porosities. Uh, this is 10% material, 90% air. That's awesome. I feel like you could just kind of, you could also put this in a reactor if you wanted to, right? Yes, yeah. So we're going to be looking at some of those uses too, because it may be really good for like micro bubbles or yeah. trying to filter them out yeah. or running it through one. Well, thank you, Sean, for yeah. taking us through all the stuff. Thanks, I really Randy. want one of these tanks now. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, we're going to have to get you in one. Yeah, that's awesome. All right. Thank you, Sean. Thanks. Have a good reef stock. You too. All right, we're here with Archit at the Colorado yeah, exactly. Aquarium Wholesale booth. How are you doing? Good, how are you? How's Reef Stock been for you guys so far? Amazing. Yeah. Such a huge crowd this year. Uh, we have had so much traffic, so much interest. We absolutely love it. As we were walking up, I saw one of, the, one of these structures being unboxed. Can you take us through what this aquascaping thing is? Absolutely. Yeah. So this is basically a pre-designed kit. When you buy a box, it has a picture on it, it has exact dimensions, so you know exactly what you're buying. And putting it together, it took us like five minutes to put this whole thing together. Uh, everything is color coded, you just match the colors. You match purple to purple, green to green. Uh, putting it together, everything is dowels. Okay. So it is super easy. Uh, and the benefits of this, you know, aside from it being a negative space structure, so you have a lot of flow, there's no dead spots. Uh, as hobbyists, our corals are overgrowing over time. And what do we do? We sit in a glass tank filled with salt water with hammer and chisel, trying to break the pieces off. Yeah. With something like this, take the piece out, put a new piece in, you're done. Uh, also, even when it comes to acclimating corals, right? You buy a brand new frag, whether it's an acro, acan, anything. Yeah. You are trying to light acclimate it. And instead of re-gluing it over and over again, you can glue it once to a shelf and you can move the shelf all over the place. Oh, okay. So it has a lot of benefits. That's awesome. You guys also have these lights too, right? Yes. Not released just yet? Exactly. So these are our Reef to Light Ultra Bars. They have not yet been released. Uh, they come in 12 inch sections and you can connect multiple bars to create up to an eight foot long bar. This right here is our UV channel. It has all the diodes from 385 nanometer to 420. Then this is our blue channel, which is all the way from 430 to 460 nanometers. Okay. And lastly, our full spectrum whites, which is, it has 480 nanometers plus warm whites and cool whites. The warm whites and cool whites, as you already know, already have the reds and greens in them. So it's really not necessary to have yeah. the red and green diodes. In fact, most people that have lights that have the red and green diodes or channels, you usually turn them down anyway, yeah. like 25%. Yeah. So, uh, this will suffice. And you can obviously mix and match the colors too. I was gonna say, you don't see a lot of controllability with lights like this. So that's, exactly. that's really, and it's on an app too? It is on an app. 
Uh, so you can program it completely, all time-based, um, or we will also have some predefined programs. So if you have an LPS heavy tank, SPS heavy tank, you can choose those settings and you'll be good to go. Uh, so we are the exclusive distributors for Coral Essential Lines in the US. Uh, this line is out of uh, Australia. Okay. In fact, Sustainable Reefs, which is a huge coral farm, uh, this line has been developed over there. Uh, they test all the products for about a year or so at their farm before they actually release it. Uh, and aside from all the minor trace elements, they have the standard amino, grow, but their flagship is this black label line. Okay. It is a mix of fatty acids, vitamins, which really uh, you know, increase the polyp extension overall, uh, add the color to the corals, and the uh, fluorescence. You guys also have a whole host of other things that you wholesale, right? Yes, we do. So we are a wholesale company. Uh, we sell to stores directly. Uh, we prefer not to do any sales directly. Uh, and we have a whole slew of products from the Hydros line, Camor line, Aqua Forest, um, Ice Cap, list goes on. <laughs> Very nice. Very so reach out to your local fish stores, ask them to reach out to us, and uh, we would help, love to get the product uh, in, into stores. Very cool. Archit, thank you so much. Thank Appreciate you. Appreciate it. Happy reef stock. Thank you. We're here with Antonio from VCA. But before we start, I'm going okay. to have you do a demonstration first. Okay. So this is our new Flex Series nozzle. We just came up with this back in August. And our challenge today is that if you can break this nozzle, you can have one that's not broken. Now, I'm going to preface this. this. This one here has been at a couple of shows. It's been used and abused, I don't know, by how many people. But I don't think you're going to be able to break it. Okay. Give what's it a shot. The, what's the proper, is there a technique to it? Or? Twist it, bend it, fold it, pull on it. I don't care what you do. It's not, you're not going to break it. Here. Want me to try? Fold it in half. I just want to try and pull it apart. You're not going to be able to. You can twist it. Yeah, it's not, it's not, it's not gonna happen. It's not coming apart. This thing is gonna be the most durable thing in your aquarium, I guarantee it. For those that don't know what that thing is, <laughs> describe what this does. This is a, aquarium. this is the patented random flow generator. It is the only random flow device in the market with no moving parts. It's designed to create a more natural flow in your aquarium, but do yeah. that without any noise, heat, or additional electricity. So we and, I, and I can demonstrate for you right yeah. here. Please do. Great. So this right here is a high flow demonstration of this aquarium, or of this, uh, of this um, nozzle. So we're seeing a really pronounced effect here. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pull this one inch nozzle off the line. This is probably about 1,500 to 2,000 gallons an hour going through this line right now. Okay. And give it a moment, it's gonna kind of relax and we can see there's almost no movement in this tank. But if I add some air to it, you'll see the air, you'll see the flow coming straight out of that nozzle, right? Not super beneficial. It's just all very linear. Yeah, linear. Only one little fan moving, nothing really going on in the tank. You add a one inch random flow generator to the outlet here. Let's get that on there. And instantly it starts to wake up this entire system. And there you start seeing the fans move, you start seeing waving. So yeah. now I'm gonna add air to the line again so you can see the flow. Watch this, it's gonna go up, down, left and right. Wow. So here's something a lot of people don't know about this though. If you slow this flow down, let's say I'm gonna turn this pump halfway, like maybe down to the halfway mark. Yeah and all of a sudden it's gonna start going a little slower. So I'll add air to it again, and it's randomizing slower. So you can almost dial this in as a wave maker to your aquarium and start creating a standing wave in that tank. Very cool. Super beneficial, super easy. We've got our flow readies right on the side of the package so you know how much flow to feed the nozzle. And you do that and you get this effect. That's really cool. We have our new Ultimate Return Line Upgrade Kits. We have dual three quarter inch, dual half inch, and dual one quarter inch. Okay. But beyond that, we have a bunch of accessories like tweezers and a really popular vacuum attachment for the guys who want to clean out the sump. Okay. Let me grab one of those for you real quick. So we have this steer, this is our vacuum attachment. It's like the easiest way to clean out your sump. Yeah. It's like you just attach a little CJ micro tank, uh, pump to it. It makes it real small and you, in about 10 minutes, you go from that to that. Lots of detritus, no detritus. That's awesome. The other popular accessory that we're running is our Never Rust floating tweezers. These are 11 inch tweezers. They're made out of plastic and they float. Try that out. Just want to feel your tweezers. Yeah. That's awesome. I mean, you could also, you know, eat uh, chicken fried rice. Yeah? Yeah, their <laughs> wide, wide pad would grab more, more of yeah, the grounds. Yeah, I like that. <laughs> That's awesome. We've got a busy booth, Antonio, so we're going to let you get back to it. Appreciate uh, that. Thank you so much for your time. Have a great reef stock. Thank you. Get into some coral stuff. I'm excited about this. We're with Tarek from Aquaculture. How you doing? Hi. How you doing? Good show. Yeah, great show. Great show. Been crazy this year. So, uh, what kind of what kind of corals are you guys offering? Um, 
You know, we Much wanted to bring, together. yeah, we wanted to bring a little bit of everything. We wanted to bring a lot of quantity too, you know. Um, right now we just, we have tons of $5 frags, $10 frags, $20 frags. Uh, I mean, our booth is lined all the way around. Kind of take you guys through it, but uh, in addition to the corals, my big thing is uh, quarantine fish. So we like to run all of our fish through three different rounds of meds three different tank transfers before they even hit our retail side. That's awesome. Um, you know, so the price might be a little bit more, our fish might be a little bit bigger, um, a little bit thicker, but they're definitely healthy. Yeah, do you, you have know? some of those here today? Yeah, yeah, let's come check them out. Um, I also love inverts. I love creepy crawlies, goofies. There's just some $20 cleaner shrimps, little snails, uh, Ooh. It's beautiful marine beta hanging out. And uh, Japanese golden hawk down there. We call her Lil' Kim. <laughs> yeah, just wants a little attention, yeah. you know? So yeah, next year um, I plan on bringing a ton more fish too and kind of doubling down, bringing a ton of fish and inverts. Um, so it feels like I'm the only one that did it this year. Yeah, so well, I want to keep the tradition alive. Clams. We got $20 frags, yeah. Tons of clams. Um, you know, we love the Ultra Maximas. Bunch of acro colonies. Uh, awesome. Ninety-five percent of all of our corals are all aquacultured, Very good. Um, grown from local home growers around Colorado. Is what I like to carry. We uh, we also converted some uh, leopard puffers to full salt. They've nice. been a hit, a hit this year. That's cool. Yep, everybody was all yeah, about them. We always talk about uh, you know the salt conditioned mollies and. Yep, yep. Uh, things like that. We will have a ton of saltwater mollies. We're already converting them over for next year. That's great. Yep, great algae be great. years for sure. They are. They are machines and essential, yeah. I think, uh, especially in an acro tank. You know, they can really get in between those sticks, make it happen. Yeah. So, well, yeah. Derek, thank oh, yeah. you so much for uh, Thanks for your time, Remy. I appreciate you, man. The, uh, booth and thank you. At, have fun at Reef Sack. All right. You. Appreciate it. All right. We're at Merman's Reef. Merman's Reef. Reef right? slash landlocked corals. Slash landlocked yep. corals. Yep. Uh, Jack. Yep, happy Jack. Reefstock. Yep, happy Reefstock. Nice uh, to meet you. Seen your face on a couple of Reef Builders videos over the past couple of weeks. Yeah. With some of Jake's corals, right? Yeah, yeah. So I was a huge fan of Jake. Like, I've been literally, like, reading Reef Builders articles since, like, 2008, which is when he, like, came on the scene. And, like, that's, like, really what got me into reef keeping was, like, reading his articles. Like, the way he wrote about things made me really interested in it. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, he's like, I don't know, I really looked up to the guy, uh, I met him in like 2014, we're always uh, doing stuff together, so um, ever since then basically, uh, and he's always supported my shop and like giving me tips, always like been very blunt with like his opinions very, and stuff, yeah, yeah. let me know exactly what he's thinking and like, you know, how I can improve stuff, like what looks like, you know, garbage, what, what needs to be fixed, you know, like uh, what I could be doing better, uh, stuff like that, he's really good at pointing those things out without like, yeah necessarily being you know too harsh about it you know like sure. he, was, he had his he had like this like demeanor about him he's almost like gordon ramsay like the gordon ramsay yeah. of reef keeping if you ask me so yeah. like yeah super but, soft heart uh, yep. but we'll tell you like it is yep right? exactly um, exactly so i guess a lot of people may be wondering how they can grow a piece of you know jake's legacy in their tank yeah so we have about a thousand pieces of jake's legacy corals at our shop right now they're all growing out and crusting looking really good uh, and Raj, the owner of Reef Builders and Windsor are working out exactly what we're going to do with them and we'll definitely keep everybody informed on what we're going to do with them. How's, how's Reef Stock been for you guys? It's been corals? good. Yeah. It's been amazing. We've been selling a lot of corals, rock flowers. Uh, we got, got a bunch of like jawbreaker mushrooms and stuff we've been selling. Uh, we've been selling a ton of Pokemon, like stuffed animals and plushes <laughs> and stuff, like a ton. Like it's insane. And then, uh, yeah, it's just like a bunch of like acros, mushrooms and stuff like that over there, ghanis, and uh, just letting them go real cheap today because it's the last day, so. Yeah, very yeah. cool. Well, Jack, thank you so much for, uh, for hanging out with us today. I really yeah, appreciate of course. it. We'll yeah, let no you problem. get back to work over here. And, yeah, I appreciate uh, it. Happy very much. Start. Yeah, thank you, man. I'm here with Chris, Unlimited Color Corals. Uh, how's the show been so far for you guys? Show's great. Denver yeah. is awesome. It's always a great turnout. Um, we love coming up here. We're from Houston, Texas, so this is our seventh or eighth year coming to Reefstock in Denver, and it's a great city. We love coming here. From your perspective, what's the corals that usually sell the best at shows? Or does that vary by region too? It varies by region. Uh, every region is different, and every area has a different want and need that we try to fulfill. Yeah. 
What is your favorite that you've that you've got in the tanks right now? So my favorite, like every year, is uh, red carpet enemies. Like yeah. they're absolutely my favorite, and we try to carry some to every single show. So I think a lot of people are are scared to put those in their tanks because they know they get big. Yes. They know that they eat fish. Yes. So how, what, like from a care perspective, what would you suggest? The care is the, actually the easy part, in my opinion, for red carpet enemies. Um, we house all of our carpet enemies with clowns. So they're maintained in baskets like this in yeah. eight foot runs with pairs of clowns. Gotcha. So take us through some of the other stuff you got here. I see you got some, uh, some NEMS here. Some NEMS, some yep. Meat corals. So Ganapora is like another thing that we kind of specialize in. Um, we aquaculture 95% of all of our Ganaporas before we ever release them or sell them. Gotcha. So, Ganaporas are my, probably my second favorite piece um, to, to sell and to pass on into the industry. Has Galaxia seen a little bit of a return? Galaxia has seen a huge resurgence. Yeah, I, I, I've seen a lot of variation of color these days. Yes. They're not just like your greens or your purples. Now you've got some <laughs> yellows and you know golds mixed in there too. Correct. It's really cool. Thank you. That's awesome. Well, it looks like you've got a, a, a strong selection. You've got a tank over here as well. Yes. Um, I think I took some video of this cluster right here because <laughs> it's just beautiful. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, so um, I've been to Indonesia. I've been twice to collect and dive and bring stuff back. And my other love, of course, are the meaty, fleshy LPS corals, uh, acanthos, Wilsophilias, Endophilia, Sinurinas. Yeah. Um, and I, I like to pick some of the more unique ones. Yeah, those are beautiful. Thank you. Well, you've got an awesome selection here. Thank you. Uh, Chris, thank you for your time. Appreciate My pleasure. It. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Happy reef stock. Thank you. All right, we're at the Hydro Space booth with our good friend Ken here. You guys are, you're local, correct? Correct. Uh, right in Johnstown now, right across from uh, Loveland, across the interstate. Okay. And tell me about your products. What do you what do you do? We focus on purple non-sulfur bacteria. Uh, three species: Rhodopseudomonas, Rhodospirillum, and Rhodobacter. Uh, all of them are anaerobic. All of them are heterotrophic, so they consume organic matter. One cool thing about Rhodopseudomonas is that it additionally is a denitrifier. But we like to think of all of them as a super nutritious, live, natural coral food. Nice, nice. Am I using it to start of the tank? Am I using it as maintenance for the tank? Mm -hmm. Go through that. Sure. Different uses, generally bioremediation, so clearing the water of uh, excess organic matter and nutrients. But and again, for food, um, the typical reef aquarist would be most interested in keeping these with corals. So uh, they are good. Corals do eat them. They collect them with the mucus and they're uh, over 70% protein okay. loaded with B vitamins so great in that way but we like to think of it as the food that cleans up after itself because of the denitrification and Love that. water clarification yeah that's great so I'm, I'm using this more as a food mm -hmm. so every night every day just a little every, bit in there every day is ideal about a 1.25 mil per gallon uh, but they can't be overdosed which is a really nice thing yeah and uh, where, can, where can you buy this? Uh, you can uh, find it maybe at your folk favorite uh, LFS okay. store. Uh, but uh, we are online, uh, available at LG Barn, saltwater.com, Bulk Reef Supply, Premium Aquatics, and soon to be many others. Very cool. Well, Ken, thank you so much for your time. Thank Enjoy you. Enjoy the rest of Reefstock. You too. Have a good show. All right, well, that is a wrap on Reefstock Denver 2023. For those of you that came out, thank you so much for coming out. And if you didn't get a chance to come out, maybe we'll see you next year. Follow along at Reef Builders on all the socials. We'll see you next time.